time and possibility and necessity and knowledge and change and dynamism and belief. These are really cool concepts in philosophy. We want to reason about them. We want to do logic with them. We want to prove stuff. And that's where proof trees for modal logic comes in. Hello, welcome to Attic Philosophy. Welcome to the Attic. You can probably hear the wind whipping round this morning. I'm Mark Jago. I'm a philosophy lecturer here in the UK. In Attic Philosophy, we're going to be covering logic, metaphysics, the mind, language, social philosophy, environmental philosophy. In this video, we're covering proof trees for modal logic. If you're completely new to proof trees, I've got an intro video. Go and watch that one before you watch this, then come back right here. Okay, you're back? Good. Modal logic, it's where we add a box and a diamond to our language. Usually we take box to mean necessarily and diamond to mean possibly, but they can mean loads of different things. It can mean uh, stuff to do with time. It can mean knowledge. It can mean belief. Let's just keep it as necessarily and possibly for the time being. How do we do proofs in modal logic? The tricky thing is we no longer have sentences that are just true or false and that's it. Because in modal logic we have lots of different possible worlds. A sentence might be true at this world but false at that world. How are we going to incorporate that into our proofs? We need some way of incorporating information about different possible worlds. So here's the easiest way to do it. For each line for each sentence we write down in our tree, we're going to put a little number next to it. We're going to start with zero. So our premises, they're always going to be labeled with zero. And then as we go on and we add more worlds, we might add one and two and so on. That just helps us keep track of where we're saying sentences are or aren't true. The great thing about proof trees for modal logic is all the rules that we learned before, they still apply. We just add to them information about worlds. OK, so if the premise has an N on it, like a number three, then the conclusion has that same number. So the rules look like this. Now we're going to add four new rules, and these allow us to deal with the box and the diamond. Let me tell you about the diamond rule first. Diamond A means A is possible. We think of that as meaning that there is an accessible possible world where A is true. So here's what the rule tells us to do. If we start off at world N, like world 3, the first thing we do is we say there's another world that's accessible from that one. So if we're starting with world 3, we say there's this other world, world 4, and that's accessible from world 3. This new world that we're introducing, it has to be a brand new one. So it's a number that hasn't cropped up in that branch of the proof tree up to this point. And then we say that A is true at that world. Like this. The rule for box A, like necessarily A on the other hand, has this information about relations between worlds in the premise. OK, here's what I mean. If you have box A true at world N, and you also know that there is this other world that you've got already in the proof, M, that's accessible from N, then you can infer that A is true at that world, M. OK, they are the two difficult rules for the box and the diamond. There's also a rule that says if you've got not box A, then you just change that into diamond not A. And similarly, if you've got not diamond A, you just change that into box not A. All at the same world. Nice and easy, those two. So with those four new rules, that's basically it. We do a tree just like normal. When do we close a branch? We close a branch when you've got a contradiction A and not A at the same world in the same branch. OK, so if you've got P3 and you've also got not P3, you close it. But it's no good if you've got P3 and not P5, OK, because that's saying that P is true at one world and it's false at another world. No contradiction there. Let's look at an example. Let's see if we can prove this sentence. It's called the distribution axiom. It tells us a little bit about how the box for necessary distributes over the arrow for implication. 
OK, since it's an axiom, we should be able to prove it. So here's how we start the tree. We write down the negation of that sentence and we put a zero by it. It's a negated conditional, so we write down the antecedent again at zero and the negated consequent at zero. That gives us box P at zero, not box Q at zero. We change that to diamond not Q at zero. Now we've got a diamond sentence, and that's one of those rules that introduces a new number, a new world to our branch. OK, that new number can be number one, so we write down zero arrow one. This is like saying world one is accessible from world zero. And we say that not Q is true at world one. Since we've got box P at zero, we can infer P at world one. And likewise, we can infer if P then Q at world one. OK, we've got if P then Q. We know from propositional logic that this rule branches. We've got not P on the left at world one, Q on the right again at world one. Let's check each of those branches for contradictions. Here we've got P at world one, not P at world one. It's a contradiction. We close the left branch. Here we've got Q at world one. We've got not Q at world one. Again, it's a contradiction. We close that branch. We've got a finished closed tree. So we've shown that that sentence, the distribution axiom, is in fact valid in modal logic. OK, so when I said they're valid in modal logic, maybe what I should have said is that it's valid in all modal logics, because there's not just one modal logic. There's a whole bunch of different systems. How do we do proofs for those different systems? Well, each system comes with its own additional rules. We've looked at all the rules for the connectives. The additional rules concern how the accessibility relation works between worlds. OK, so when we write down sentences like this, the additional rules allow us to manipulate those sentences. Let's have a look at some of those rules. Basic modal logic is called K. For that, there are no additional rules. Then we've got a whole bunch of different modal logics with names like KT, KB, K45. Basically, the way these work is the letters or numbers that come after the K, each of those refers to a rule. So if we are doing proofs in KT45, we can use the T rule, the 4 rule, and the 5 rule. Let's have a look at those rules. The T rule says if you've got N on your branch, then you can add N arrow N. The B rule says if you've got N arrow M on your branch, then you can switch it around and add M arrow N. The D rule says, well, it's kind of saying every world can access some world, but you don't know which world. So the rule says you can always add an arrow to another world. So you can always add N arrow M, M being a new world. The four rule, this is the transitivity principle, says if you've got N arrow M and you've also got M arrow L, then you can go from N to L. And the five rule, this is probably the most difficult of them all. This rule says if you've got N arrow M and you've got N arrow L, then you can add an arrow from M to L. OK, let's look at some examples. Suppose we want to know whether diamond P entails box diamond P in the modal system KB4. OK, so that means we can use all of the regular modal logic rules plus the B rule plus the 4 rule. So what we do is we write down the premise, world 0, and the negation of the conclusion, world 0 again. The conclusion, it's not box, so it becomes diamond not diamond P. Let's go back to the first premise, diamond P. That gives us a new world, world one. So we add zero arrow one with P true at world one. This diamond sentence gives us another new world, world two. So we add zero arrow two with not diamond P true there. It's not diamond, so we change that to box not P. Then we have to do some tricky stuff. There's no other sentences of the logic that we can apply a rule to. The only thing left is to try and fiddle around with the accessibility relations using the B rule and the 4 rule. OK, so here's how we can do that. The B rule allows us to 
switch things around. So here we've got zero to two, so we can add two to zero. The four rule is like transitivity. Here we go from two to zero, and here we go from zero to one, so we can infer from two to one. Here we've got box not p at world two, that allows us to infer not p at world one. Let's check that branch. Here we've got not p at one. Here we've got p at one. It's a contradiction and we can close that. We've proved that diamond p entails box diamond p in KB4. Okay, if you know a bit about modal logic, you might think, huh, that looks a bit like the five axiom from diamond p to box diamond p. How can we can prove that inference without using the five rule? The answer is when we have the B rule in play, the four and the five rule are kind of equivalent. So when we've got the B rule and the four rule, we can simulate the five rule. That's how we can prove this sentence or this inference without having the five rule there explicitly. Okay, let's look at another example. We want to know whether this sentence is valid in KTB. So we write down the negation of the sentence and we're going to allow ourselves to use the T rule and the B rule. We get the antecedent, the negation of the consequent, all at world zero. Not box becomes diamond not. That gives us a new world, zero to one. We've got here not box P at world one. So that becomes diamond not P at world one. That gives us a new world. We add one arrow two. That gives us not P at world two. Okay, there's now no more rules we can apply to logical sentences, so all we can do is fiddle around with the accessibility relations. We can apply the T rule, giving us zero arrow zero, one arrow one, and two arrow two. And we can apply the B rule, switching things around, so going from zero arrow one to one arrow zero, and going from one arrow two to two arrow one. We've then applied all of the logical rules. We've applied all of the additional rules, the T rule and the B rule. There's nothing else we can do, but we can't close this branch. Okay, we haven't got any contradictions at the same world. So that branch is finished. The tree is finished and it finishes open. This sentence isn't valid in KTB. Again, if you know some stuff about modal logic, you might recognize this sentence. It's the four axiom. It's the one that corresponds to transitivity. What we're basically saying here is we can't prove this axiom in KTB. OK, KTB, it doesn't give us enough rules to simulate transitivity. Here's a really nice feature of these trees. When we have a finished open branch, we can build a counter model. OK, so that's a modal logic model that makes the premises true the conclusion false at some world. Let's see how we do that. We pick a finished open branch. We've only got one branch here, so we pick that one. First up, we look at what numbers we have in that branch. Here we've got zero, one, and two. They're gonna be our possible worlds. Then we look at how they're arranged, which worlds are accessible from which. We've got zero and one being accessible from each other, one and two being accessible from each other, and each has a loop on itself. Each is accessible from itself. So the only thing we're lacking here is any accessibility between zero and two. In other words, we've got a model that isn't transitive because we can go, for instance, from zero to one, one to two, but not from zero to two. Okay, and then going back to our branch, we look at where the P's and the Q's are true, where they're false. So what have we got here? We've got P being true at zero, P being true at one, but that's it, P isn't true at world two. Okay, that should be a counter model to our inference. It should make the premise true and the conclusion false at world zero, because that's where we started. Let's just check that. Does it make box P true? Yeah, because every accessible world from world zero is a world where P is true. Does it make box box P true? No, it doesn't, because there is an accessible world where box P isn't true. OK, box P isn't true at world one, so box box P isn't true at world zero. It's a counter model, which is what we wanted. OK, so in this video, we've seen how we do proof trees for modal logic. We've seen how the additional rules work for the box and the diamond. 
we've seen how to do proofs for different systems of modal logic by adding additional rules about how the accessibility relations work. And we've shown how to construct counter models when we have finished open branches. Okay, question for you guys, how are you getting on with proof trees? I think proof trees are a great way of doing proofs in logic. You need a bit of patience, you need to learn those rules, and you need lots of coffee. If you like the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want more of this stuff in your inbox, and I'll see you guys soon.